hey look, many, many years of keeping fish and I finally have plants. Uh, that's kind of been a pain in the butt for me. Um, so kind of proud of this, this system here. Uh, this is the, it's, it's like 30-ish gallon, it's higher than 30, but it's 30-ish gallon tank, uh, built-in uh, filter. You can see the back wall, the whole back wall is basically a big filtration, almost like a built-in sump system for this tank. Um, but it's a low boy, um, so it's only about 11 inches tall, um, three feet in length, so it's got some good, you know, uh, swim space for some of the smaller fish. Uh, but finally, uh, a pretty major update for this system here, as you can kind of see the right side is, is jungle-ish, um, needs a little bit of, of trimming. Uh, but this is running a DIY CO2 system, so basically taking uh, baking soda and... Um, uh, citric acid, yeah, whatever it is, um, something like that, and then mixing that in with a little bit of water. I, mean, I guess I should probably know what I'm mixing before I say that, because you know that tank can explode. Um, but I am fairly certain it is in fact citric acid. Okay, I'm not crazy. Um, and then I'm basically pumping it in. Um, you can actually see the bubble count here. You see the bubbles going. So about a one to one and a half bubbles a second. Um, getting diffused in the tank and all these little bubbles that you're seeing here floating up you can see them kind of coming up off the the carpeting grass here and actually even better off of the red plant you can actually see um, what that is is a, it's a purling effect so to speak so um, these plants are now letting off a ton of oxygen which the fish absolutely love and that's because there's a good combination of lighting co2 um, and then the nutrients in this system um, so after many, many years of trying to actually have a planted tank, I'm getting there. Uh, one thing I don't actually have normally is patience, and these things take uh, quite a bit of time, and I'm just like, come on, need more you know, growth in the front. Uh, the goal here is to have this entire front end carpeted, so everything that you see here, uh, all the little soil uh, that you see should start to get covered. You can actually see the roots kind of moving down through the soil. Um, these rocks up here will eventually go away. They're trying to keep the driftwood down. Uh, this driftwood wants to float. You can see I got tons of moss growing on it. You can see some of the really pretty color in the back here. Um, you know, hints of red off some of these leaves, really nice red on these leaves. Eventually, like I said, those rocks will go away and this driftwood will just be covered in java moss. Um, you can see anywhere where there's some open soil. Um, this is Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo is gonna kind of grow in. You can see it kind of takes in back here too. Uh, the grass I have to kind of trim back um, probably twice a week. Uh, I try to keep it more to the right side of the tank. I want it to kind of grow upward. Um, so taming that has been pretty fun. Uh, I haven't done some pruning here in a couple, like three days. So, um, But yeah, this is pretty much a minor update. Like I said, there's still a little bit of work to be done kind of on this back left side. Basically for here, what I'm doing is I'm plucking out some of the overgrowth of some of the plants and then moving it back here into this corner so that I can have a, one more corner of some high growth. Um, but, you know, that's the part of the tank that gets probably the least amount of CO2, the least amount of lighting. Uh, so it'll take a little bit of nurturing for that to happen. But, uh, yeah, here's some, uh, I'll, I'll shut up and let you see some of the, some of the purling happening. So yeah, that's it. I have a nine ember tetra. The goal here is to have 25, but much like Rummy Nose Tetra and I don't know, uh, plywood, there's supply limitations, so I'm having trouble getting a hold of them. So uh, hopefully I'll have a, a full school in here. Uh, these guys are pretty happy. They're no longer schooling. They were a little uh, taken back by the Siamese that's in here. Uh, there's a very nice Siamese LG eater that's been in this tank for probably about a month by himself. So. He was getting a little nippy at first, and then these guys, well, as soon as they schooled together, he was like, nope. And then I, of course, have some snails. Uh, many people, you know, consider them nuisances. Uh, they are, in fact, a nuisance. But if you control your feeding, uh, they, you know, the population for them can be controlled as well. Uh, personally, I like them because they turn over the soil quite a bit for me. Uh, they get kind of in the soil and move it around. Because you cannot gravel back. Uh, something like this. this is, these are basically balls of, of dirt. So if you were to crush them or try to gravel back, it just turns into straight mud. 
But that's it. That's the update on the 30-ish gallon office tank.